Well, howdy, y'all, and welcome to the Dark Crystal Conjunction. This is Jason Elgato, and today I'm very excited because I finally got my hands on the Dark Crystal Age Resistance inside the epic return to Thra. I originally was supposed to get this on November 12th. That was the release date. Pre-ordered it, and I saw that even several people that pre-ordered it, you know, months and months ahead of time. Uh, it's showing delays now, you know, December to January 10th. Mine was saying, you know, January 10th is when it'll be delivered. At first, it was like, ah, oh, it's going to be a two-day delay. So I'll get there November 14th. I was like, okay, no big deal. You know, it'll give me time to read the other new books that we got on November 12th as well. Uh, I finally gave up on getting this through online couriers. I did ask the company that made this, Insight Editions is their name, and they said they did not know. I asked if they had any insight on why this was missing. Um, they said they were not sure because Amazon was still showing that it was in stock. So whatever, several people reported that they could just pick these up at their local Barnes and Nobles. So local bookstores are still around. So there you go. I rent to the Barnes and Nobles just five minutes away from my house. And voila, I now have a copy of Jim Henson, The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance, Inside the Epic Return to Thra. I was also very excited that I walked straight up to customer service, asked if they had this book. You know, I was unsure if they even had it. You know, I didn't know if mine would have it in stock. And the lady didn't even have to look it up. She's like, oh, Dark Crystal? Yeah, it's right over here. And she walked, and it was just, you know, a couple aisles down. It was on the end of an aisle, prominently displayed. There was three copies there. And um, she said, oh, I'm a fan of the original film. The original film's so good. I loved it. She hadn't seen the new one yet. So I was like, yes, you have to see that. So anyways, here's a new book. I have not even looked through it yet. So let's go ahead and look at this together. This is a very sturdy hardcover. And yeah, then you can see Inside Editions is who that is by. Has a nice jacket over it. And this, this artwork on the back is wonderful. This does list for $50. You can get on Amazon for a little cheaper, but you're gonna be delayed a very long time. Man, that artwork on the back is just great. Anyways, this is a behind the scenes and an art book. Let's see what's underneath the sleeve. Oh, nice. Wow. That's on both sides. That is, that's really cool. Very nice there. Here on the inside of the sleeve. Dark Crystal inside the epic returns of Thra. Explore the creation of the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance, Netflix's epic prequel series from the Jim Henson Company, with this all-access look at the show's journey to the screen. Delving into the incredible creative process behind the series, this deluxe volume reveals how Jim Henson's Creature Shop, legendary character and costume designer Brian Froud, and director Louis Leterrier brought Thra and its characters to life alongside the artists and puppeteers who are continuing the legacy of the original film. Amen, they totally did that. Filled with exclusive interviews with the creative forces behind the show, plus concept art, set photography, puppet designs, and more, this is the definitive exploration of the Jim Henson Company's epic return to Thra. Yeah, I recently listened to a Trial by Stone podcast with the author of this, who is Daniel Wallace. He's done other books like this for... World of Warcraft, for Star Wars, uh, many other big properties, and he said something like he did eighty some odd interviews. He's like it was just it was just huge. Oh man, this artwork is beautiful. This picture rather is beautiful. I'm looking at that arrow. Oh, love it. Daniel Wallace is a comic book expert, sci-fi sage, and lifelong geek. Author or co-author of more than fifty books, including The Jedi Path. Ghostbusters, The Ultimate Visual History, The World According to Spider-Man, Warcraft Behind the Dark Portal, and the New York Times best-selling Star Wars, The New Essential Guide to Characters. His specialty is exploring the underpinnings of popular fictional universes. And then Lisa Henson, of course, the executive producer of Age of Resistance and Jim Henson's daughter. So that is a beautifully... Oh, I love it. Let's just get into this. Let's just get into this and see what this bad boy has. There's some nice subtle artwork there. In the background, Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, sorry, that's the music for the old one. The new one is. Dun, 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 ding, 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 ding. Oh, man, look at this. So good. I don't know if that's the drench in place or probably stone in the wood. 
it's so cool. It's wondering if it's judging because it's like inside a gigantic tree, the Great Smurth. It's what you see in the prequel books. Jim Henson's a Dark Crystal Age Resistance inside the Epic Return of Thrall. I'm going to set this down. Just look at this. Oh, this wonderful artwork with the lore. This is great. This is going to be a pretty long video because I'm just going to go through this page by page and wonder. So here's our contents, forward by Lisa Henson. Part 1, Chronicles of the Crystal. Part 2, The Story of Resistance. Part 3, Recreating the World of the Dark Crystal. Part 4, Shapers of Thra. Part 5, Raising the Realm. And 190, <laughs> page 190, I guess it's just the uh, outro. The Angle of Eternity. Ooh, sounds nice and nerdy. Nice little Freudian stuff down there. Oh, the forward. Oh, it's so, it was so great to see pictures like this of Froud and his wife, Wendy Froud, back at the helm because, man, they were such a huge part of the original movie. Wow. I am not going to have time to read all this. I was like, oh, maybe I'll just scan through this kind. Uh, scan through this briefly, but no. This is Toby Froud. He was the one born from uh, Brian and Wendy Froud. Yep. And there's the director, Louis Leterrier. With others. Part 1, Chronicles of the Crystal. Uh, some old school pictures. Another world, another time, in the age of wonder. Wonderful stuff. So who does this artwork? A page from the triangular tome known as the Skeksis Book of Law. Brian Proud designed the book and illustrated its pages. Oh, wow. <laughs> I did not know that Brian Froud did that. In the Crystal Calls, the behind the scenes of the Age of Resistance, it showed the artist who um, made the book, but I didn't realize that every page was designed by Froud. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, man, I'm going to nerd out about this stuff. This is a picture from the Power of the Dark Crystal, the proposed second film that never came to be. It was in production hell forever. Um, I think this is why Dark Crystal fans were surprised. We actually got Age of Resistance because we were so used to being disappointed by many things. Yeah, left Froud concept art for the unmade sequel film, The Power of the Dark Crystal, depicts an older gen, hero of the original film, now crowned king. And of course, did wind up putting the prequel, I'm sorry, the sequel out as a comic book that's on Boom. It's a 12-part comic book. Yep, there's the Firelings that are part of Power of the Dark Crystal. And Old Lady Kira. Beautiful. Oh, man. I didn't know this was going to give info about all this old school stuff. Well, a lot of what they, the concepts and ideas that they got from, oh, is this um, opposite? Clockwise, a Friday illustration of a Gelfling, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Kensho, yeah, Kensho. Kensho is the main Gelfling from Power of the Dark Crystal, the main protagonist, if you will. Oh, very cool, very cool. Oh, man, this is great stuff. An ambitious new stage. Anyways, they got a lot of the ideas for uh, what became the Netflix Age of Resistance from all the work that had been done previously and, you know, uh, lots of great ideas and whatnot. Wow, I'm just going to have to blast through these pages because we're barely there. Oh, this artwork is beautiful. These pages, are, I mean, this is a beautifully illustrated coffee table book. I mean, it's thick, it's chunky, it's hearty. I mean, this is this is a thick, thick hardcover. And these pages feel great. You know, got a semi-gloss semi on them. They're nice, nice and thick. Definitely meant for lots and lots of page turning. Oh man, beautiful. I love the concept art. Oh wow. Yes. Oh man. Sorry. I'm just gonna straighten her down on this. The test. Yep, they had to put it to test first. I'm so glad that Netflix went with puppetry. Wow. And the writer's room. There's Javier. And Will Matthews. Some of the main writers on the project. Ooh, some storyboards there. What do we got up here? Huh. Yep, and there's Jeff Addis. 
we would not have this if it wasn't for them. They did such an amazing job with the writing. I thought that everything was so cared for from every aspect of this. Some people have been asking for a review of Age of Resistance. I'm just like, oh, I loved every bit of it. <laughs> the end, that's my review. Part three, recreating the world. We're already on part three. This surely has to be the biggest part. Oh yeah, so here's, we saw this in previous previews of this. Great stuff. Ah, I love the way Frau draws so loosely and just like he's sketching just creatures that he sees in his mind. That is how he kind of talks about the process if you've ever heard him talk about it. He doesn't make things symmetrical because they're real. You know, they're, these things are real to him. He'll say the same thing when you listen to him talk about his book of fairies and goblins and things like that. He's like, I see these things. <laughs> I put my pencil down and it's created. Wonderful. Lots and lots of concept art. It was really cool to see how much concept art they used from the original movie that made it into the Netflix show. under the crystals light these are the maquettes that toby froud did kind of taking his father brian froud's drawings and really making them 3d that helped a lot of the final puppets come to life because there was some disconnect between what froud drew brian froud that is and what the puppet uh, or i guess the modelers and all that were trying to make so having that in between step with toby froud who Grew up in that Froud household, and that aesthetic is his own, you know, growing up with that. Oh, such great stuff. The Fashions of Thra. Oh, man, I know what I'm reading the next. There's no videos for the next, like, month. Yeah, sorry. I'll be reading this. Oh, such great stuff. The attention to detail is one of the things that makes the original film and this Netflix series just amaze me. Oh, this is just beautiful stuff. Guys, this book is really heavy, and you stop holding it like this. Ah, oh, yes, there's the lead puppeteers there. <laughs> Man, there's just some rough working conditions they got to be, especially when they're working on the Skeksis and they're in each other's armpits. Good times, yeah. These are really the guys who brought. I mean, you can't really say one group brought the magic to life because. There's so many pieces of this puzzle. This is a key group. This is, I guess, what Sprout says, you know, makes it more magical because you have these drawings and these puppets and these dead things, and these people just bring them to life. It's just crazy. Part four, Shapers of Thra. Oh, look at these nice, big, and these pictures are very clear, very clean. I don't see any pixels on things. Um, Beautiful, 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 just beautiful. Of course, this was all shot high res HD and whatnot. Some grottens by Guffling Hand. Oh man, yes, grottens. I love the grotten. There's not many of them, under 40, at least during this time. Stonewood, yes, so tough. I love the concept art. Oh, and Freckles, the Vaprin, most handsome Gelfling. Is there any more info on him? Top left, a Vaprin known in the Age of Resistance script as Red-Haired Paladin. Huh, that's all you get. Yeah, we, we heard that was his name from Jam Lee in an interview. What his real name is, we may never know. There's some more Drenchen. Oh, I love the Drenchen, especially if you read the novels. The Sifa, they're great as well. You see, you see a lot more of the Drenchen and the Sifa in the books. That's because they're primarily dealing with water, and puppetry and water don't quite go well together. Whew, but that doesn't mean they, they didn't plan some stuff. Look at that Sifa ship there. Oh, so... Wow. Wow. Who did, who, who did, the con who did this concept art? Concept art for Sifa gall Galleons. Major Resistance visual effect team digitally added these ships to the Silver Sea around the waters of Harar during a scene in which Brea visits the Seafin Soothsayer. 
Yeah, you can see him far off in the background. Man, I wonder who, who like, who those people are. Give them some more credit. Uh, the Doosan clan. These guys are great as well. I mean, they're, they're all, they're all cool and unique in their own way. I love how they really took time to set them apart through... Oh man, this concept art's great. A lot of these guys were explained in Flames of the Dark Crystal. Flames? Was it Flames? No, what was the one before that? Uh, Song or Shadow of the Dark Crystal, Song of the Dark Crystal, and oh, I'm brain farting in the third one. I have it over here and I'm just like, Tides. Tides of the Dark Crystal. That's what it is. Anyways. Oh, look at the Sprites and Clan. Adorable. I, I, oh yeah, I, I love their hats. When I saw them on the road, and they had like the hair coming through there, like that, like that girl, I was like, oh, those are such cool hats. That's such a proud, proud weirdness. There's Brea's main puppeteer there. Oh, it's Dimian. And a lot of the lead puppeteers, the twelve lead puppeteers, they had multiple uh, puppets that they did. It's not like they just did one character. Rion, the castle guard. We had heard the name Rion for so many years when they redid the Dark Crystal website, I think back was that 2012. We saw his name. We saw that he was the one that discovered what the Skeksis were doing. Oh, storyboards. I love me some storyboards. Um, and, and when we started getting to read about him and, you know, Song of the Dark Crystal and whatnot, we got just slight glimmers and whatnot. So seeing him in full puppet as you know the main hero was just so cool oh yes yeah, storyboard look at this goodness oh mira oh wow that totally shocked me when when mirror went poof i was just like wow they have not learned to control uh you know the way you see it in the movie where they kind of more turn them into slaves and whatnot. Like they were just, the thing was turned up to 11. Oh, so good. Oh, the tear. Ooh. Ah, oh, Brea. One of my favorites. The rebellious princess. Performer. Alistinian. Voice. Anya Taylor-Joy. Hmm, hmm. It's a cute storyboards. Cute style. Oh, I love that picture of her. Definitely be using that when I redo my, my book. You know, what media to read. Early designs for the cover of Brea's Journal. Yeah, see, that's what I want to see. They said when they designed Brea's Journal that they wanted it to feel very homemade, passed down, like it was something you know, perhaps her grandmother gave to her and whatnot. Oh, the pages inside. I know some of you had been, you know, looking through the series and taking screenshots. Every time she opens up her journal, you know, the pages flipped. You saw a little more of the crystal calls behind the scenes. Like this one was pretty prominent when she's looking at that book in that previous scene. But wow, I didn't think we were going to get every page. Oh, there's a little, little pot leaf there. <laughs> oh, some different some creatures I recognize from the film. Right there. Oh, this is so cool. Whoever made this, that's just nerd joy. Actually, she's in she's in the documentary. Oh, yep, yeah, these guys are in the original film and comic. And Striders, of course. Ooh, maps of Thra. Oh, this is this is so nerdy. I love it. The symbol of power. It's hard. This book is really heavy and big. <laughs> Castle Crystal. These are designs that you find on the back of the Uru. Wow. Wow. You know, they did not have to do that. That is super rad of them. Let's keep turning this bad boy. I can't just, I can't just put it down. It's so, it's so exciting. Deet Hilgram of Throb. Performer Bessie Henderson. Voice Natalie Emanuel. original Groton designs. Pretty much on the way that they describe the Groton 
in the books is, you know, when I first saw the first picture of Deet, I was like, yep, that's just how I pictured them. You know, big black eyes, white hair. She's some glow moss. Oh, beautiful stuff. Absolutely beautiful. The Almadra. We used gold puppeteer the Almadra. She performed the Skeksis on the original film. One of the few of the original cast, I guess. That was in the new one. Celadon. Ugh. The goth princess. <laughs> oh, yeah, and there she is in full goth mode. Yeah. Bottom Brian Fowles concept art for Celadon's Skeksis inspired dress, which she wears after declaring her, her fealty to their cause and turning her back on the Gulfling resistance. Oh, dastardly. Man, that scene. Whew. If that didn't give you fills of some kinds, you might be dead. Ah, oh, Tavra, my main Gelfling gal right here. I love Tavra, especially from the books. Oh, man, she was great. And the way that she was performed and sounded and looked in the series, I was like, yep, that's Tavra. It's totally Tavra. Wow, he looks super tough here. Ordon. Wonderful. Really loving his comic as well. Gurgen. Oh, how sad. Just Gurgen. Hmm. There he is. Naya. Ah, Naya. I love her too. I'm. I'm really. I. I kind of first came to this world of Age of Resistance type era through the books, and so all these char these guys that are main characters in the books are really special to me. Yeah. See, there's Kylan. He's he's kind of a big deal. He's actually the main. The story is told through him in the second book. Let me grab those. Yeah, see, book one, Shadows of the Dark Crystal. There's Naya there. There she is. She's got those dreadlocks, green hues and whatnot. And oh, they just did such a great job. And book two. And actually, yeah, so book one and four are told from her perspective. Here she is on cover of book four. Being all tough, using that Vilayala. Gelfling magic, if you will. Song of the Dark Crystal. See, here's Kylan in book two. The story's told through his perspective on this one. You know, so it's kind of a big deal. He does more than just make broth. And then Omri, unfortunately, didn't make the cut. He was put in a little too late by the time they started um, the Netflix show. So you don't see him, although I know he's there. It, the camera just didn't pick him up, so... He's there in my heart and my mind. Anyways, continuing on. The third book is told from his perspective. The Way of the Skeksis. Ah, oh, yes. The Skeksis were incredible in the show. <laughs> I love all the detail. Man, these guys. These guys are so horrible. I love them. How can you not? Some behind the scenes pictures. Man, can't believe all those sets they built. Nearly 80 as well. Just incredible. Hm. That was the part when he gets pushed down and the general steps on his on his hands. He's always getting those hand injuries. Poor fellow. His next hand injury will come from Jen stabbing him with a crystal shard. <laughs> so good. So good. Some crew behind the scenes there. Oh, yes. All the detail. When you put in every stitch. The love and care that went into this. It said multiple times that everyone who worked on this was a hardcore fan. <laughs> Look at the smile on her face. Dressing up the Skeksis in their battle armor. That is... I love it. I love seeing that. <laughs> Some of the radio controls for the chamber one there. Lots goes into making these alive. Oh, they are going to show us what's inside that book. This is another one I was like, someone please screenshot every time they kind of crack open this book because you don't see hardly any of it. Oh, these are just the sickest. Oh, that Skeksis script there. 
Skeksis. Ooh. Love it. What do we have there? Concept art for the Skeksis Book of Law. Top right. Brian Fowler illustrations for the pages of the Skeksis Book of Law. Book of Law illustrated by Philippa Broadhurst. Okay, oh, yes, she's the one inside the um, in the documentary. Based on the symbols and characters for the Skeksis language created by Brian Fratt. Opposite the final Skeksis Book of Law prop. Yeah, so here's here's how it ultimately came out. When that when they opened up that book, I was like, oh, that is sick. And of course, in Thraw, it's not going to be your typical looking book. It's going to be triangular. Things are going to pop out all weird. That is so This was the page she was, uh, Breyer was specifically looking at when she was really questioning a lot of things. The librarian kind of flipped out. Wow. Creativity. I just, this is what makes a Dark Crystal so, just one of the things I should say. Makes it so special. Oh, man. If someone did a replica of this book, yeah, I, I would drop. So good. Look at them. Look at all saintly. Yeah. Such propaganda from the Skeksis. These guys. These guys. Skeksis. Skeksil, the Chamberlain. Oh, yes. He's kind of a big deal. <laughs> I, love get, I love that you got to see so much of his behind-the-scenes political plays. Love essence. Oh, rip Mira. Rip. Skektek. The scientist. <laughs> Love it. Oh. Peeper Beetle. <laughs> that was a gross. Totally great. Dark Crystal gross out scene. Dark Crystal's got to have those things. Spider head to be tilted up and visible. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is when they get one of their Rotham and they start uh, experimenting on them. Lots of goo. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're cool. Telescope. Man, I mean, look, this. Uh. I mean, the designs are incredible. And then that they made them, it's. Uh. I'm so glad they did new stuff like that. Above, a concept piece for the Emperor Powerful Telescope. The Emperor's Powerful Telescope. Situated high up on the balcony of one of the spires of the Castle of the Crystal. Oh, so good. I like, I like that in the, here they call them silk spiders. A dead silk silk spitter, rather. You, you see that name a lot in the books. I don't remember them saying that in the show itself. I think you just hear them called it. Aratham time and time again. I could be wrong, though. Skexo the Emperor. Love it. He was he was great. It was really great to see him in his prime. Cause when we we're first introduced to him in the film, he's on his deathbed. My empire will not be dust. Yeah, ironic. Great irony there. Oh yeah. The bath scene. Yeah. Oh, I never noticed this little little bug dude. Eating some of the toe fungus. It's, I didn't need to see that, you know? Oh, yeah, they had close-up storyboards of that. Maybe I missed that in the show. A beetle bug feeds on the skin of the Emperor's foot as the Skeksis relax in the castle bathhouse. Yeah, uh, some of the writers had said that this was really the scene that they wanted as, you know, kind of like in, in the film, the... The banquet scene was the big kind of, you know, gross, just over the top, like, these Skeksis are, uh <laughs> They're just so otherly that they wanted to do something like that. And uh, to them, it was the bathhouse scene. Oh, man, this is getting long. Let's keep going through this. Yeah, well, you can always fast forward or you don't have to watch. I'm enjoying this. The General. For the time being, Skekvar the General. So great. Ha, yep, there's that scene where he got his hand stepped on. Rip. Skeklak the Collector. 
both of those did change from Legends, the Dark Crystal. Man, I loved these characters. I just assumed that the storyteller was high on some of those Uter berries. And that's why we have some contradictions. It's Gigzok, the Ritual Master. I love seeing this, this new concept art from Froud. For these older characters, or the ones that were originally in the film. Oh man, yeah. And they, and they, they look like they just had the same puppets. They were just recorded with better cameras. Like, it was incredible to have they recreated some of these. And in some sense made them, made them a little more, a little younger and more vibrant. Yeah, oh, Louis Gold, yeah. So she originally did do Skekayuk, the Gourmand. Representing Gluttony. Let's get like the Scroll Keeper, Skekadect. Ornamentalist. It is where they changed the Ornamentalist from being a he that was extremely feminine to a she. But whatever. Doesn't really make a difference. Oh man. Look at that. duality and the Skex, the Skexies and the Mystics. In the original film, the idea of the Urskex split into two creatures with opposing natures allowed Jim Henson to explore a theme that fascinated him. How a soul can be torn apart by warring impulses. Let's keep moving on or else we'll actually never finish. Skek Mal the Hunter, yes. Oh man. When he came out also, like when I saw his foot step down, I got nerd chills totally because I had read about him a lot in the books. And in the books, his reveal is a lot slower. Like you hear about legends and tales that Gelfling tell to their children. And they're kind of taken as folklore. Like, ah, oh, that's just, it's not real. These are just things you, you say to scare Gelfling children so they don't go out late at night. To the endless forest. Oh, so creepy. And when he when he showed up on film and he started running and moving and busting out his blades, I was like, yep, this is just how I pictured him. Oh, so good. From the books. So good. Urva the Archer. One of the few mystics we see. He's in the books as well. Three wrinkle matters, according to Fred. Well, storyboards, lots of storyboards. I'm glad they're all within a certain context. I thought there was just going to be a section of storyboards because I saw a couple previews. I just had a couple pages of storyboards. <laughs> Cute concept art. Of course, there's going to be all the detail on the bow itself. <laughs> Skikraw the heretic. Oh yeah. Looks much like the original school, old school concept art. This character was over the top. Oh, look, there he is without his, <laughs> his nail through the head. Interesting, what is that? Opposite bottom, concept art for the heretic's workbench at the Circle of the Suns. Hmm. Ergo the Wanderer. The old school. Uh, one of the original puppets was blue. Let's check back on some of my previous videos. I have that footage. Great stuff. Hm. Yep. Usually these guys get some of their harebrained ideas from. <laughs> Art for the Wanderers hookah style pipe. 
On this page, a trio of concept designs for props that would decorate the elaborate circle of the sunset. The Wanderer's workbench, the mystic sleeping chair, and a small forge. This workbench reminds me a lot of uh, some of the weavers stuff and that looks much like the one that we see the Uru death in the beginning of the film. Mother Agra. Wow. And they totally nailed Agra. It was so great to see her in her different get up and doing some different things. I don't like it when prequels just kind of do the same thing. Uh, I like how they went further in this prequel. And man, it was, it worked well. But you still, that voice of Agra, you know, the who she is, her characteristics, was still all there. Oh, it's such great artwork. <laughs> Helix horns. Fingers. Hup. Some concept art for Hup. <laughs> Hup the podling. He came out much cuter. Oh, both are both are pretty cute. It'd be funny if they made another puppet and, and like Hup goes back home and he turns out like this is like his older brother or something. He's totally bigger dude out of shape. <laughs> oh man, Hup. I did not expect a podling to be one of the stars of the show, but man, it was well deserved. Well deserved. Oh, lore. Automated antique. You know I'm going to read about Lore. Is there any new info on him? No. A couple, couple paragraphs. I'll, I'll save it for later. Feel free to pause and read it yourself. Oh, great stuff. Uncou style there, you can see. Oh, so incredible. So incredible what they did with that puppet. Again, I have a video just on, on him. And how that's, this is totally something that Jim Henson wanted in the original film, something likened to that. And man, do they pull it off. I don't know if they have any more concept art on him, because in the making of Age of Resistance, they talk about all these different designs they had of him. Some storyboards of him. These are really big storyboards for a whole page. It seems like they could have saved some space there, but yeah, there you go. Five storyboards for two pages. Yeah, whatever. Expressions of the living world. Oh, yeah, some of the creatures of Thra. Oh, man, the detail of the land striders. So good. So good. There's some details about those guys. I posted that on my Twitter and YouTube community page. Some of their names that you see there. He he he. This gig. A fizz gig. Oh, the belly rub. So cute. So cute, you Oh, the Gartham. Man. When they came up there at the end, I was like, oh, snap. Gartham more times. We have a little snippet of that in a two part manga, which is, which is really great. Oh, rip. Rip the Grunax. Okay, they got some. They got some. Some, uh, this is a from a test from Jim Henson. Jim Henson's underneath here. Uh, you can't see him in this one. I have another picture of him where you could see the miners. These guys were originally written to the Dark Crystal script, were taken out, I believe, due to time. What do they say about that? Were, were they based on this? The Grunax serving the scientist's laboratory in Age of Resistance might seem new to viewers but their origin stretches all the way back to 1978. Jim Henson's proof of concept screen test for the Dark Crystal featured a minor puppet in a supporting role, and all of the character was nixed from the final film. Comic book publisher Archaea later used photographic references to include similar creatures called Macrax in the graphic novel of the Dark Crystal Creation Mist. Yep, this is all true. It's actually a important part of where we see the general, well, Skekvar, when he's, before he's a general, he's the ambassador, and where we see why the Gelflings start to trust the Skeksis, or one of the big reasons, and the Paulings as well. When it was decided that Age of Resistance would include similarly inspired creatures called Grunax, Toby Froud went back to his father's original pencil sketches for the characters before attempting to mold them as three-dimensional clay sculpts. When I did the maquettes, 
they became a bit more sloth-like, he said, explaining how he emphasized the length of the arms and gave the Grunok's hunches postured with nearly non-existent legs. That's really interesting because if you look at the crystal, so look at one of my older videos where uh, it goes through, uh, pitch. it's the pitch booklet art, it's just sepia tones, you know, red ink, and the miners in there look more like the Grunecks. You can definitely see similarities, but this makes a lot of sense. I'm glad they put that in there because I was like, well, we already had the Magrax. So those guys aren't based on that. I mean, maybe there's some similarity, but uh, they definitely look like the Magrax concept art a lot. And Toby Froud just confirmed that. So, yeah, go and look up my video, The Crystal, and you'll see those. There's a little section that talks about the miners, those that work for the Skeksis and live underground doing their bidding. What is this? This page, Brian Froud concept for the face of the Ascendancy. Oh, cool. Ooh, that would have been pretty creepy. The comic book, uh, when they when they show some of the Ratham together, that's very creepy. Oh wow, how far do they get into this? Opposite top. Toby Froud created their physical sculpt of the face made of silk spider pieces. The sculpt was later turned into a puppet that the visual effects department used to guide the animation of the Ascendancy. Wow, it would have been creepier if they made it more like this. Uh, this the ascendancy was uh, I, I did like the concept and they're definitely creepy in their own right but when they all kind of came together it was a little too CGI-ish and glossy looking for me um, you know it served its purpose it was fine oh, all of these hold the little little threaders oh these guys are nasty so dirty <laughs> I love seeing that smile on Louis Terry, the director. He's he's just an Uber fan. They just get, handed him a camera, and he knew what to do with it. I mean, he did a lot more than that. He did the editing, and it sounded like he was the main coach, leading and guiding everything. Uh, our hat should really be off to him. Part five, raising the realm. Oh yeah, show me some background sets, man. I love this concept art. Oh, miniatures. Miniatures are so cool. 3D printed map. Ooh, map of Thra. This is just the known world. There's another, there's a whole other side of Thra. Oh, there are many other sides. Lots of room for hope, as the writers have said. Don't be all down saying, oh, the characters just die. You don't know what happens. We do not know what happens. Yes, we know by the film. In that area, there's two Gelfling. The Skeksis were surprised that they had found Grunax again. They thought they were all wiped out. Always room for hope. All right, we're getting towards the end here. Ooh, concept art of the city of Harar. Ah, oh, so good. So good. Wow. I said they had to go with a couple of different designs because the more and more angles, the harder it was going to be to build, the more expensive, rather. And the design they went with was, I think, very effective and simpler. This, this seems a little, a little gaudy for the Gelflings. Although, with where they were at in that current age, maybe that makes a little sense. Especially all their influence from the Skeksis. Oh, I love seeing all these miniatures. So rad. All right. Ooh, and the throne. Yep. I totally did not notice that symbol on the back of the throne until Unamoth flew in there. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's that cover. I need this as wallpaper. Can someone give me that? Put that on my three monitors. HD, please. Thank you. That's weird. incredible. Wow. wow. The amount of books they made. It was just scene by scene. There was just so many visually stunning parts of the show. 
Not a librarian. Where did I put that book? That's what Amazon's saying right now. Where did we put all those books we promised people on November 12th? Yeah, I guess we'll give it to them in December or January. I'm like, nope, let's go down to my local bookstore. Thanks. Cancel order. Yep. Create storyboard. See? They, they put in... That's how storyboard pages should look. Not like that lore one where they wasted two pages on five storyboards. And there wasn't even that much detail on them. I mean, it's fine, it's fine. I'm thankful to have this. He <laughs> he. Yes, these big pictures. And this, this, I mean, this, this is just, this is a beautiful book. This is what these guys do. They did it right. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. She, she really was able, I don't know if it was the way she's designed and the puppeteer and what, I don't know what it was, but she was able to express the most wonder. Like, like those scenes where she was like looking up and, oh, you know, the gasping and, you know, and the, vo the voices. And I mean, I know a lot goes into it, but she was the most believable character to me. Like, wow, what are we experiencing through her eyes right now? Like, man, I, I felt it. Oh, beautiful. Such great stuff. This is concept art for Domrock, the Groton capital. Oh man, this looks so good. Yeah, well, I mean, Nerlock skin leather, talking about their boats. Driftwood from the sanctuary tree. Oh, cool. There's a story behind every detail you see in the Dark Crystal. Well, I'm already gonna say it, that this book was totally worth it. It is what I expected. There's lots of behind the scenes info. I mean, I've only read two or three paragraphs and skimmed a tiny bit here and there. But this definitely looks like a book that will keep you busy for a long time. And even if you just kind of are looking through it, just kind of scanning it, man, it's just visually beautiful. Oh, all that Seafin patterns. So cool. Seafin tent. Seafin are a unique clan in that they really accept any kind of Gelfling to become Seafin. So you just gotta get some some blue garb and join along with them. All the detail. I mean, just all these little things that, you know, I don't even know if we saw this, or maybe we saw it for a split second, but it's just beautiful. Just so much care. I love that the backgrounds were matte paintings, just way in the background. Now, usually they're out of focus or way off in the distance. But uh, I'm glad, I mean, that's an old school method that. I don't, I don't know how many people use that anymore. Hodling Village. <laughs> so good. Oh, I love the little models. I love it. And there's the sizing chart. If you want to see it compared to a human. But there's no humans on Thrall. So I don't know if we should use those humanly measurements. Just kidding. Kind of. Oh, yes. Endless Force. Yeah, see that backdrop that they painted there in the background? And that's if it looks, looks real. I mean, artisanship is not dead. Dark Crystal's keeping it alive. I mean, not exclusively, but. <laughs> Rose Nurlock. Rip. Rose Nebri. Ooh. Oh. Sad. <laughs> Ooh, moving chairs, impressive. <laughs> I love the sass. Just Lagra has great sass. Really loved what they did with her. And this. See, I, I, I don't mind having that concept art bigger because there's a lot more detail in it. Instructions on how the crystal works, how it travels, out of shot, yep. down the crystal shaft, into Mithra, shooting Thra. Yeah, one thing that really impressed me about this is how 
I mean, Dark Crystal was already, you know, the best feats of puppetry was shown in the original film. And I don't know if anything had matched it. And they knew that was an expectation. And they went further and beyond puppetry. Like, it was incredible. And it, they pulled it off. They did it. It looked great. <laughs> this is great. This scene, this scene was incredible. There's actually a video with some magazine or something that Lisa Henson and Louis Leterrier, I'll, I'll link it in here, do and they kind of pause the scene and explain things. It's really cool. It's really incredible how much they, of practical effects they did with this. And I mean, and it, again, it paid off. It looked incredible, yeah. Here's all the action scenes. They said they had to really painstakingly do every shot because they had to see what they could and couldn't do. And they had a different crew just for like the hand shots and things like that. You know, showing the puppets grabbing things. Oh, it kind of looks like a baseball first. I was like, what is that baseball doing there? Some concept art for the arm and legs. They were the only creature, as far as I know, that was 100% CGI. Poor little guys. I'm so glad they got set free at the end. A uh, great little model of the Skeksis Mobile. This sequence took weeks to complete. Warwick was uh, the one guy who said that. He was the one who puppeteered Skeksil, the Chamberlain. Oh, this concept right so great. Man, these are these are these are great shots. Man, I thought I was almost done with this thing. This book just keeps going. Wow, circle of the suns. <laughs> Puppetry. I lost it when that that scene came on. That it that blew my mind. I I think I stood up while watching it. I was just like, what? what? Are you? No way. They did not just do that. And then when you actually saw it in play, like this, I was like, this is incredible. I was like, uh, I mean, it's, it's so meta and funny for many reasons, but wow, it was incredible. And it was cool that they found, you know, the young puppeteer to, uh, you know, who does, you know, little puppetry stuff on YouTube. And he's the one, the one doing that stuff. I forget his name at the time. Um, I will definitely link to him as well. He has a YouTube channel where you can see him doing these kind of hand puppets. And they look incredible. They look incredible. But man, seeing this was oh, brilliant stuff. I'm so sorry I forgot his name. I've been watching his stuff for a while. Setbacks and pushbacks. Oh, this will be some sad stuff. <laughs> So great. All these skexy swords, so good. Okay, we're definitely getting to the end now. I can hardly fill any pages when I turn it. The Groton fight for Thra. Yeah, this was one of the early shots they showed. And I was just like, what on earth? Like, they're actually making the Dark Crystal? And it looks incredible. Yeah, this, this apparently was one of the hardest scenes that they filmed. There's some interesting stories I have about this that I've been listening to on different podcasts. Sorry, that's my dog. Great photos. <laughs> mm. I love seeing them in their battle armor. It's just so pompous. We're just looking through a book. We're definitely going pro level there, so you're going to hear the dog scratching himself. Sorry about that. A journey must end all. What about season two? Just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, so good. Wow, look at the those wings. Do they have them drawn there? Across this digital model. So cool. Yeah, again, I think it was a great mix of CGI 
the puppetry. Uh, the crystal seat. I didn't think we were going to get to see any of this because the way the book describes it, I was like, there ain't no way we, they got a budget to do that kind of stuff. Um, man, it was really cool to see that. And when, they, and when they mentioned that there was a storm coming, I told my fiance, I looked at her, she's like, oh, storm coming, no big deal. I was like, no, no, in the book, like those things rip things apart and they're huge and crazy. And then like the next scene, you see like that crazy storm. I was like, nice. Angle of Eternity, what is this? For the director, the future of the series holds endless promises, but he's also proud that the first season of Age of Resistance is strong enough to stand alone as a complete work. I feel we'll be able to take fans on a journey they've been waiting for for 35 years. My takeaway from season one was, we did it. And it all works. Going forward, we have much more to offer our audience. Oh, man. By Agra's eye, there's an incredible cast and crew. I guess just crew. Cast with the puppets. <laughs> These are the people who brought them all to life. I, cannot, I mean, I can't believe they recreated the Crystal Chamber and things like that. And it just looks like it's just right out of the film. Oh. I mean, now that they got all the sets built, so many of the puppets, it's like, man, season two, easy. <laughs> I mean, I know it's still extremely expensive and not the easiest way to make a show, but man, am I thankful that they did it. Wow. Well, initial impressions, again, this is totally worth it. This is beautiful. Very hardy. Uh, oh, it's just so rad with the sleeve. So, yep, I'm going to recommend that you get this. And I don't know what else to say. Go ahead and leave your questions in the comments. Uh, I will definitely be looking more and more into this book. I've had a lot of older episodes, especially when I do the trivia, that I get from the older making of books and whatnot. And so I expect that I'll find some really cool details throughout this book when I read it a little closer. So I'm sure we'll get a lot more of those details. Anyway, so that is Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Inside the Epic Return to Thra by Daniel Wallace Ford by Lisa Henson. This is definitely a tool needed if you want to keep exploring Thrall.